All right, let's open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 18. I'm going to read verse 9 through 19. If you have the ESV Bible, let us read it all together. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and live in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city, Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her since no one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scent that wood, all kinds of article of ivory, all kinds of article of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses and chariots and slaves, that is, human souls, the fruit of which your soul longed has gone from you, and all your delicacy and your splendor are lost to you, never to be found again. The merchants of this wares of who gain wealth from her will stand far off in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud. Alas, alas, for the great city, that was clothed in the fine linen, in a purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels, and with pearls. For in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste, and all shipmaster and a seafaring men, sailors, and all whose trade is on the sea, stood far off and cried out, and they saw the smoke of her burning, what city was like, the great city. And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city, where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth for in a single hour she had been laid waste amen i was just continuing the message about you know those people who will mourn when jesus christ comes on this earth and this is the you know picture here in uh, chapter 18 where those people who begins to mourn because they love the things of this world they did not love god but they love the things of this world and when this world can come to an end you know, everything collapses, and everything that they hoped for, everything that they wanted, vanished. And then it's just being destroyed. And when that happens, that people, when they begin to see that happening, they begin to weep, and they begin to wail. And one of the things that I want you to understand is that we talked about this, that, you know what, first of all, we talked about, um, you know, love of self. You know, and the people really love themselves. And that's the generation that we live in. And we, I talked about that. And, and second thing I talked about was money. And you know, people will be the lovers of money. And that's what's going to happen. And we see more and more of that. Money has always been a god of this age. And people love money. You see what I'm saying? You know, people do anything for money. Uh, but you know, money is something that you know, we have to use uh, right now on this earth for the kingdom of God and also to survive and also to serve God, amen? So that is why sometimes God tests us through money too, you know? Sometimes I wish that, you know, I want you guys to people who get, can give offering to God, you know, rather than spending on yourself, you know, to the kingdom of God. I also challenge people to become rich for the kingdom of God, amen? You know, because God wants to bless you, you know? And then if your heart is right, if your vessel is ready, then you know what? God's going to pour out in your life so that you can really give to the kingdom of God. You can really support the missionaries. Because I, 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 I uh, read this once. One time, this person went to heaven, okay? And, you know, he was mentioning that, you know, like, you know, that there's a judgment of the, those people, you know, uh, of who did not give money to God, you know? Money, money to, you know, giving offering, you know, to the church. And the reason for that is that, you know what? You know, because of that, through that money, you know, the gospel is preached. And missionaries are funded. You see what I'm saying? And then those people who ignore those things, you know, were being punished. You see what I'm saying? And then, you know, he, he was just sharing that picture. And I was just like, you know, like as I was just reading that, it begins to like stir me up a little bit and challenge me. Because that, wow, you know, because like, you know, if we don't give offering to God and if we don't give money to the Lord, then you know what? God's kingdom cannot be expanded. God's kingdom cannot be reached to the ends of the earth. Amen. And because of that, because of that restriction, that sometimes God will judge His people, you know, not giving money to the church, and not giving money to the missionary funds, and not giving money to those things. So I wanted to challenge you, okay, uh, to live that life, 
You see what I'm saying? And then sometimes, you know, money is always a test in a way that whether we truly love God or money. You see what I'm saying? Because the Bible says you cannot serve two masters, you know? So you either serve money or you either serve God. So that is why we have to serve the Lord, amen? So that is why sometimes not only we give ourselves to the Lord, but you know what? We also are becoming a, a faithful steward s uh, for the money that God has given us, okay? So that we can support missionaries and we can, you know, uh, you know, support pastors so that they can preach the word of God, amen? So I truly believe it is very, very important, you know? You see what I'm saying? You know? And I already said, you know, last week, last, last week, that you know what? I don't need money, okay? You know, our church... Is, 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 is God has blessed us, you know. I, we never struggle with finances in our church. You see what I'm saying? That's why I don't really talk about offering that a lot. But you know what? I want, I, I want to talk about this because I want you to receive the blessing of God, you know, for your personal blessing, okay? You know, God wants to bless your life, okay? So that is why I'm saying this, okay? And, you know, um, you know uh, that God has blessed my life. You see what I'm saying? God has blessed this church too, financially. You know, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, like, but I want you to really do it for the Lord, okay? And if you do that, then, you know, God's going to bless your life. I guarantee you, you know, that God's going to open the doors and that God's going to begin to bless your life so that you can be a blessing to other people. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, we need to live that life. Now, today, I want to talk about the last thing. I want to talk about the pleasures, you know, and that is the last thing, okay? You know, in the, when the perilous time will come, the, in the last day, you know, people will love the pleasure more than God, you know? And that's the age that we live in right now, okay? I think the pleasure is the most common thing right now that's happening. That people live for the enjoyment of something. People live for something. You know, like pleasure is always like this. If you do this, then you know what? You're going to feel good. You know? And that is the temptation in this age. You know, I've seen people like, they don't even have a car. They don't even, you know, they're, they're, they're riding bus. But, you know, everybody's texting. You know? so Everybody has a smartphone. Everybody's just enjoying the media or whatever. You see what I'm saying? You know? And I realize that this generation is that even though you're poor, even though you have nothing to eat, you st- still have a smartphone, you see what I'm saying? And then, you know what, you're connected to all these different things, you see what I'm saying? And then, you know what, it's just people live for that, their enjoyment in life. I was just blown away by the statistic that average college student used their smartphone eight hours to ten hours a day. And I said, that, what? They're texting, they're, you know, like, you know, looking for different things, and you see what I'm saying? And then they're watching videos, whatever, you see what I'm saying? And everybody's into smartphone, everybody's into this media, and all these things that is happening, you know? And that's the age that we live in, you know? That people are addicted. People are doing all these things for the pleasure. You see what I'm saying? For themselves. And that is the age that we're living in right now, okay? And then, you know what? If you begin to live according to those things, I guarantee you, you cannot really truly love God. You see what I'm saying? Because this is very feeling-based. You see what I'm saying? This temptation is very feeling-based and emotion-based. So what happens is that your emotion is there, then you cannot truly love God. You see what I'm saying? You know? That your emotion is always into this. You know? And one of the things that I realize is that you know, this pleasurable thing is, has to do with sexual sins. Pleasurable has to do with like, you know, drunkenness. You know, pleasurable things are like you know, doing drugs or gambling. You know? or, or even this, like being addicted to games. You see what I'm saying? Being addicted to, like, you know, media. Being addicted to internet. You know? Being addicted to movies. You know? Or whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? All this thing is in, under the umbrella of, of, like, doing a pleasurable things. You know? That loving pleasure more than God. And that is the age that, that we can s- so easily fall into this kind of, like, thing. You know? But one of the things that I want you to understand something, okay? You know, sexual immorality is sin. Fornication is sin. Adultery is sin. Okay? And a lot of people, sometimes, like, you know, we're living in an age where adultery is not a sin. You know? People don't consider that a sin. You know, we're living in an age where fornication is not a sin. You know? It's okay to just live together. You know? Be pregnant. You know? It's just, just without getting married, without any commitment, you know, before God. And I think there's something wrong with this generation right now. Because they do not realize that they're sinning before the Lord. You know? And they have to repent before God. But they're not repenting. You know? And one of the things that I realize is that whatever God calls sin is sin. You see what I'm saying? I don't care what, you know, people say, can say certain things about, oh, you know, like we are living in a very liberal society right now. That we are living in a society where everything is accepted, everything is tolerated. You know? So it, a lot of people say it's okay. You know? 
the Christian needs to be understanding and all that stuff. But I want to say this. There's a difference between tolerance and love. Amen? I remember, um, you know, President Obama, you know, spoke on Easter Sunday, I think, you know. And then, you know, it was on national TV. And I was just watching it. And then, you know, people were debating about his speech, you know, what he gave. And, 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 and I was just listening to him, you know. And then he was reacting to, you know, the Indiana law, the religious law that they just recently, like, and then a lot of people got angry and all that stuff, you know, because the, now the business... Through that law, what they're doing is that they can refuse lesbian and gay people, you know, out of their business. You see what I'm saying? You know, you know, they don't have to accept them. And then that a lot of people got angry, and you know, Amazon and all these people got angry. And then what happened was that you know, President Obama started speaking, you know, and then he said that oh, you know, you know, today is Easter, and Christian is a religion of love, you know. And then he was just mentioning that. And then why so many Christians are very narrow-minded right now? And you know, he was just saying those kind of stuff on national TV. You know, and when I hear that, I said to myself, well, "There's something wrong with what he's saying." You see what I'm saying? Well, you know why? Because what he's saying is that you know, like you know, we have to be tolerant. You see what I'm saying? We have to accept everything. You see what I'm saying? As a Christian, you know, because you know that's that's what he describes love is all about. You know, but the Bible says this: love always rejoices with the truth. Amen. That's what the Bible says. What he's saying is that love is tolerance. But you know what? There's a different definition of love in the Bible. Love, true love, always rejoice with the truth. And a lot of people don't understand that, you know? And they said, oh, you know, as a Christian, we need to be tolerant. We need to be understanding. We need to accept everything. Really? There's so many pastors and even leaders right now, they're saying that, you know what? Every, every religion leads to one heaven, you know? It does not matter what you believe. If you're Buddhist, if you're Muslim, and all that stuff. And what happens is that people, you know, people can believe whatever they want to. You know? And we're going to end up in the same place. Really? When I read the Bible, the Bible doesn't say that. And the Bible says that all the word of God is the truth of God's word. Amen? You know? And whatever we call sin, we, call, we have to call it sin. I'm not just speaking, you know, you see what I'm saying? You know, gay or lesbian. You see what I'm saying? The Bible says this, those people who are homosexuals, so those who commit a sexual immoralities, those people who even envy, you know, or jealous all the time, you know, they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They're all the same sin. You see what I'm saying? And what I'm trying to say is this, whatever God calls sin, we have to call it sin. Amen? You know, so that we can repent and turn away from those sins. Amen? You know? A lot of people say making a big deal out of this, you know, like the homosexuality and all that stuff. You know, a lot of even Christians too. But I want to say this. There's all sorts of sin, amen? Not just homosexuality, amen? You see what I'm saying? We have to understand that, you know? And I want to say this. When the, sometimes homosexual, you know, comes into that, we should love them, amen? We should accept them, amen? You see what I'm saying? You know? And we should love them as a Christ loves them, amen? So that they can understand the love of God so that they can come to church and they can have a chance to believe in the Lord. Amen. That's, what, that's how we need to live our life. You see what I'm saying? But also, we have to also refuse gay marriages. You know? Because that is sin. Amen. Because what happens is that if they begin to pass the law, you know, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know why? Because if they allow gay marriages in all states, and if I refuse to marry a gay couple or something, later on they, they will make a law that I'll be arrested. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to marry them. I'm sorry. I love them. I want them to know the truth and come to Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I want that. But you know what? I don't want to marry them. You know why? Because it will violate my conscience through the Holy Spirit. You know? Because I know it, it shouldn't be that way. You know, it's very, very unnatural. So that's what I'm trying to say. I understand where they're coming from and all that. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes maybe they had a, like, a rough childhood. I don't know. You see what I'm saying? You know? But, it, you know, like we have to love them. But at the same time, you know, we have to follow God's law. Amen? You know? So that's why I want you to be sometimes open-minded. But at the same time, you know, we have to pray for this nation. You know? And one of the things is this. When it comes to sexual sins... God is not tolerant. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. 
if you look at all the past sexual sin cities and all that stuff Pompeii God destroyed it there's a judgment of God you know and I'm worried you know why because California we have a serious drought right now it's very very serious Governor Jerry Brown already said this I, I, know, I don't know whether you read the newspaper or not he said this by July okay those people who spend a lot of water they have to cut it to 35 percent the middle ground they have to cut it 25 percent those people who use few water they have to cut 10 percent you know and then they're star building us you see what I'm saying you have to you know pay you know the, the if you violate that law then you have to start paying you know the penalty and all that stuff starting from July you know in the Midwest right now there's like eight tornadoes destroying a lot of cities right now out there you know last winter New York says that they had the most snow ever in a hundred years you know all this report is coming you know maybe you know you see what I'm saying the judgment of God is coming you know and we have to be alert and we have to wake up and we have to really pray for this nation amen I'm serious. In your like small group, you know, mid group, I want you guys to pray for this nation. Amen. You know, pray for California. You see what I'm saying? Because God is not tolerant with when it comes to sexual sins. You know. You know, I guarantee you. But you know what? That's what's happening in America right now. You see what I'm saying? All this pleasurable experience that they want. They just want to live according to how they feel or according to their own needs, you know? You know, we need to be very, very careful about that. So that is why, you know, whatever God calls sin, let's consider a sin. You see what I'm saying? Admit it. And then not only that, you know what? If you live that life, then you know what? Repent. You see what I'm saying? God is God of grace. Amen. God forgives us. You see what I'm saying? You know? And God is God of second chance too in life. But don't abuse that. You see what I'm saying? You know, I see a lot of Christians abuse that now. You know, because God is God of second chance. That all oh, have a second chance all the time. Now, you see what I'm saying? You know, when we repent, we truly need to repent. You know, and turn around from that sin, and we need to live that life. The second thing that I want to say is this: this pleasure of sin has to do with addiction. You know, whether it's drunkenness, alcohol addiction, you know, drug addiction. You see what I'm saying? Now we have sex addictions, you know, and all these different kinds of addiction. Gambling addiction. You know? Gambling addiction is very, very scary. It destroys the whole family, you know. But you know what? People have all this kind of addiction now. Game addiction, you know, internet addiction, the movie addiction. You know, everything is all about addiction. And I want to say this, that if you're addicted to something, then you're something, you're serving other idols in your life. God does not want you to be addicted, amen, to the things of this world. But you know what? It's so easy to be addicted to those things, you know? I want to say this. You're a Christian. All of you are Christian? If you're a Christian, raise your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you guys to be addicted to God. Amen? I guarantee you that's the best drug, you know, in the whole wide world. <laughs> it's better than the drug. Amen? Really? When you are intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, when you're addicted to Jesus and the presence of the Lord is there, you are going to be so joyful. There's such a peace inside your heart. There's such a satisfaction inside your heart. You know? That you don't need to be addicted to those things. You know why people are addicted to those things? Because they never taste that the Lord is good. Did you know that? Because if we experience that the Lord is good, that His presence is so, such a marvelous thing, that, that the, His presence is such a joyful thing in your life, inside your heart, then you know what? You will never seek those things. Why? Because when, when you compare what God gives you and what this world can offer, there is no comparison. Amen? Because what God gives you is way, way, way much better in your life. And there is no side effects. You see what I'm saying? You know, what God gives you. Because there is true satisfaction and true joy, you know, inside God. But the thing is this. Sometimes when you are in a shallow relationship with the Lord, then you are tempted to touch those things. You see what I'm saying? And to get into those things. That's where the problem is. 
And what I want to challenge you is that deepen your relationship with the Lord. Go deeper with God, amen? You know? And taste and see that the Lord is really good. Amen? You know? The Bible says, seek me and you shall find me. You know? Sometimes God tests our heart. You know? Why? Because God wants to know whether your heart is really serious about Him. Really seeking Him and loving Him. You know, more than anything. You know? So that is why we have to give our hearts to the Lord. You know? This year, I pray that let's go deeper with God and let's be addicted to the Lord. Amen? Amen? Let's be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. You know? Such a feel, you know, fullness of the Holy Spirit in our life. Today morning, one of the elderly men came to me after the service and he wanted to receive prayer. And I was laying hand and praying for him. You know what? He was intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. God was touching him in such a marvelous way that he could not hold it. Like he was just vibrating all over. You see what I'm saying? You know, and he didn't know what to do with it. You know, so he asked me to come and pray for him. You know, but you know what? He was seeking God. And then you know what? God met him and like God was just like touching him all over. And I said to God, hallelujah. You know, that, we, that should be our everyday experience, amen? That we're so filled with the Holy Spirit. Whatever God wants to give you, God wants to give you best. Because God is good. Amen? How many of you truly believe that God is good and God loves us? Then whatever He gives, He gives best. Amen? You see what I'm saying? And it's way, way better than the worldly addiction. You see what I'm saying? And worldly things. You know? And that is the challenge that I want to give to you. Let's be addicted to God. Go deeper. You see what I'm saying? And taste and see that the Lord is good. Then you know you'll never be the same. You want God more and more, amen? You know? I know some people, you know, hard time, you know, you guys have a hard time praying. Me too. I had a hard time praying. But one time, you know, I was just praying and then I made that connection with the Lord. And I'm praying and I'm praying and praying. I pray about like four or five hours just straight. Just sitting down, not walk, even walking around. You know what? I was in heaven, literally. You see what I'm saying? And I could pray on and on and on and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Wow. Amazing. You know? Lord told me this. Don't try to pray. But you know what? Enjoy the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Receive what heaven can give you. Amen? You know what? You don't want anything else. You don't even have to try. Amen? I pray that we'll go to that place, amen? Where we're so embraced by His presence. We're so filled with His presence in our life. You know? That we don't want anything else in this life. You see what I'm saying? Because everything in this life, and anything else in this life, is cheap. Has no value, <laughs> amen? You know? Compared to the real thing. That's what God desires. The third thing that I wanted to say is that this kind of pleasurable things are what we call a drunkenness. The Bible says do not be drunk. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, that we shouldn't touch alcohol drinks. And no, it's not talking about that. What God is saying that do not be drunk with the world. You know? Do not be drunk with the world. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says this. People sleep at night and people get drunk at night. But you guys are the sons of the day. So do not go to sleep. Do not fall asleep. And do not be drunk. And that's the, the command that, that, that Paul gave. Amen? We are living under the light. And those people who are under the light, we're alert. We're awake. Amen? You know? We don't fall asleep spiritually and we don't become spiritually drunk either. You know? Because those people who are drunk, with the drunk with the world. You know? And what happens is that they have enjoyed the world so much that, you know what, they have forgotten God. You see what I'm saying? You know, they ignore God. And when God speaks to them, God calls them, they don't respond. You see what I'm saying? They're so drunk. You know? I remember the time that when I spoke to the drunk person, and then, you know what, he was so drunk that he doesn't know what he was saying. You know? He couldn't even hear me what I'm trying to say to him. You know? And after what happened is that he fell down. I kicked him. You know, <laughs> you know, really, you know. <laughs> wanted to see he's alive or something, you know what? But he's, ah, you know, like, <laughs> you know. 
He doesn't respond. You know, in Korea, you know what happened? There's a lot of drunken people. And what happened is that sometimes, they have, you know, in Korea, they have a winter, right? And it's very cold. One guy got drunk and then slept on the street. And then, you know what? They found him dead in the morning. You know? Because he was sleeping in the cold weather. And he didn't even know that he was dying. See so what I'm saying? You know? That's what happens. People does not even know that they're going to die. You know? And that's what happens when you start just enjoying the things of this world and you begin to ignore God in your life. You know? And you, you are just drunk. You know? You don't have any sense of what's going on in your life when you're going to die. But one of the things that I want you to do is say, we're all going to die someday. Amen? And we're all going to meet God. Amen? Amen? face to face you know God has made a decision to die once for a man but after that there's judgment that's what the Bible says and then you know what we need to be awake you see what I'm saying do not be drunk with the things of this world but you know I love God last day people say that you know people will give lovers of pleasure more than God this is what I want to say the greatest commandment in the Bible is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. I know how hard it is, okay? You know, I understand. There is, I understand those people who are working in the world right now. I understand, you know, those people who live in the world. It's hard. You know why? Because the spirit of this world is very, very strong right now. You know? And it's hard to be a real good Christian right now. I'm serious. It's hard to follow the truth right now. You see what I'm saying? And that's the age that we live in right now. Okay? So what I want to say to you is this. That if you don't love God with everything that you have, okay, there is no way right now that you can overcome all that temptation. All that pressure from the spirit of this world today. There's just no way. Like the Bible says, you have to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You know? And when you do that, then we'll be victorious. Amen? We'll walk the narrow path. And then you know what? We'll walk the you know, way of victory in our life. When you begin to love God. You know, right now, that you guys have to have a, such a strong bound with God. Amen? Because if you don't have that strong bond with the Lord, then you know what? The world will pull you away from the Lord. Maybe we could go to church. Maybe we could worship God. Maybe we could sing some songs to the Lord. But you know what? We're not going to have strong faith. You know? And that is why we have to focus on Him. To love Him. In your life, do everything for His glory. Amen? Seek Him. You know? Fellowship with Him. And love Him. Then I guarantee you, you will be victorious. But you know what? We can't do it. Why? Because there is Holy Spirit living in us. Holy Spirit is the one who gives us desire. I want to say this. A lot of people say, oh, it's so hard to live a holy life. Of course. I will say this. It is impossible to live a holy life. With your own effort. Amen? You know, if you're just trying, then of course it's impossible. You know? But it's this. That's why God has sent the helper, the comforter. Because he knows that we cannot do it on our own. You know, parakletos means comforter or helper. Para means beside. Helper means someone who comes beside of you and helps you. You can't do it. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. Last Friday, I was challenging people this. What is, it, what is good about believing in Jesus? You know? Can you tell me? What is good about believing in Jesus? You, know? you have some, some peace. You have someone to depend on. Okay. What does it mean to really, you know, like what is it really, what really benefits you? Because you believe in Jesus Christ on this earth right now. 
A lot of people say, oh, you know, someday we go to heaven. We suffer through life and we go to heaven. No. What is really good about living in Jesus Christ? You know? And I say this. What's really good about living in Jesus is that the Spirit of God and Spirit of Jesus Christ live inside of you. You know? And then you know what? He builds the kingdom inside of you. There's righteousness, peace, and joy inside of you. Amen? That's the first thing. And then not only that, He helps you to live for you. He helps you to minister and fulfill the calling that God has given you in your life. Amen? You know? And He is the one who does the work. Amen? That's what's good about believing in Jesus Christ. That is why when Jesus was crucified and after He was resurrected, He has sent the Holy Spirit. Amen? You know? All of you are child of God. Amen? Then child of God receives inheritance from our Father. Amen? You know what that inheritance is? A lot of people say, oh, it could be a blessing upon this earth. No. That inheritance is the Holy Spirit. That is the very purpose that Jesus Christ died for you. Amen? And that He was resurrected. So that He can send you the Holy Spirit. So that you live by Him. Amen? Walk by Him. You know? So that you will live a life of victory. I want to say this. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no ministry. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no Christianity. Amen? There is, without the Holy Spirit, there is no holiness and sanctification among Christians. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not your effort. I try. You know, one time I had a breakthrough. A big breakthrough in my spiritual life. You know what that was? I was struggling all the way through my Christian life. Literally, you know. And I, I got so fed up. I got so frustrated. Lord, whatever you're telling me to do, I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I tried and tried and tried. I failed, 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 you know. And you know what? The Lord spoke to me. He said this. Before you were a Christian, you couldn't do it. You couldn't live a righteous life. So what made you think that after you believe in Jesus Christ, that you can live a righteous life? Because I've tried to live my righteous life through my effort, you know, and through my diligence or whatever. And I couldn't do it. And then, you know, from that point on, Jesus said this. I'm going to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. Who is going to become your best friend. You know. And when I relied on Him, I can cut all all addictions in my life. When I completely rely on Him, then you know what? I live the life of victory every day. Amen. You know. And then He said, good about believing in Jesus Christ. The best thing about believing in Jesus Christ is that the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit, God, in us, lives inside of you. You know? And we live that life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? As Paul said, that is the best life that God wants to live. Amen? You know, the life with the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I give you praise. Lord,